Maryland Vocational Education is hereby um, resumed. Chair would like to um, request the Secretary to acknowledge the presence both virtually and physically of our invited guests. Claire, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. For, for the hearing this morning, the following resource persons um, are joining us uh, physically. We have from the Commission on Higher Education, mm -hmm. Attorney Frederick Mikael Farolan and Attorney Peter Lloyd Carpio, also, repre uh, also representing. Uh, also with us virtually are uh, Chairperson Prospero de Vera III, Executive Director Cinderella Haro, Commissioner Marita Canapi, and Commissioner Joe Mark Libre. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have Attorney Tricia M. Baraan, Director Jacqueline Ludovice, and Ms. Ella Lorraine Obra. Um, also from the DBM, we have Ms. Piel Marie Aguilar, Ms. Marie Grace Datuin, Ms. Rudilin, Rudilia Parel, Ms. Gloria Kionisala, and Mr. Earl John Lazarito. From the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, um, we are joined by Mr. Ed David Bungalion, Director Ashery Banto, and Director Joven Jovencio Ferrer Jr. From the Commission on Audit, um, we have Mr. Aldrin Candelario, Ms. Gloria Bailon, and Attorney Christine G. Oldan Uy. From the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, from the uh, and the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, we have Attorney Joshua Calaguas. From uh, the United oh, okay. Student Financial Assistance System for Tertiary Education or UNIFAST, we have Ms. Princess Shane Abante and Mr. Marlem Elect Hoviliano. From the Film Development Council of the Philippines, we have Ms. Kelly Ruth Andres and Mr. Mark Jan Pamintuan. From the Multimedia Arts Association of the Philippines, we have its president, Dr. Elizalde Duran. From the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy, we have Superintendent Joel Y. Abutal. From, from the Southern Luzon State University, we have its president, Dr. Dorothy Nantes. From the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, we have Dr. Ambrosio Cultura II and Dr. Maria Elena Palma. From the Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, we have its President Dr. Jaime Manuel Jr. And from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, we have Professor Albert Guilio. Again, um, I would like to acknowledge the virtual presence of Chair Popoy de Vera. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Claire. Anong oras dyan po, po sa London? It's at 2 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Chair. Kaya pala walang laman yung coat mo eh. Coat lang eh. <laughs> Hello, Ob. <laughs> Ina, Good morning. Po, Good morning in London, <laughs> Chair Popoy. Thank you for joining us virtually. Let's proceed with our long agenda. Um, items number one and two, prescribing the guidelines for the establishment and operation of LUCs. Um, I read the proposed bills and the bill approved in the House. May I ask, Chair Popoy, kailangan ba ng batas? What is the prevailing rule now as to how LUCs are established? Because I know for a fact that we have several LUCs in existence already. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, kailangan ng batas because... Uh, when uh, the CHED law was uh, passed in 1994, uh, there were uh, very few looks at that time. And therefore, there is no specific provision in the CHED law pertaining to uh, local universities and colleges. So what has happened since then is that CHED has issued memorandum circulars to uh, handle the uh, criteria and requirements for looks. 
So this bill will be similar to the provisions of Republic Act 8292, which determines the governance of state universities and colleges. So uh, we welcome uh, the efforts of Congress to pass a, a specific law on local universities and colleges. So the existing guidelines of CHED can be put into law, Mr. Mr. Chair. So just to clarify, Chair Popoy, um, again, I read the bill, but I'm not familiar with the um, numerous um, policy issuances by CHED with respect to looks. Will these, pro will these proposed bills make it easier or stricter or just the same under existing MCs of CHED to form or organize a look? Uh, the existing MCs of CHED, which is being used by looks now, are actually uh, tighter than the provisions of this law because we issued a new CMO in 2022 which uh, revised the uh, CMO that was being used uh, previously. And uh, so our proposal, Mr. Chair, is that uh, amendments be incorporated in these two bills to reflect the existing memorandum orders of CHED that are currently being used uh, uh, by local universities and colleges. So the passage of the law will not in any way affect the existing looks that have been accredited by CHED thus far previous to the passage of this, these bills. Would that be correct? Yes, yes, Mr. Senator, Mr. Chair, because uh, the local universities and colleges that are currently included in the free higher education already comply with provisions of uh, uh, requiring 100% certificate of program compliance, for example, which these uh, two bills actually do not provide. Uh, the provision to uh, select a president who has a PhD is also a current requirement, which uh, more uh, close to 100 local universities and colleges have also complied with uh, to be included under free higher ed. So we are also proposing that this be incorporated in these two bills, Mr. Chair. Agreed. I completely agree, Chair Popoy. Um, Chair hereby approves um, House Senate Bill Number 1999, taking into consideration House Bill Number 6630. And refers it refers it to a technical working group in order to consolidate the latest memorandum circulars issued by CHED with respect to looks and any other changes CHED may want to include, so that um, you need not issue rules and regulations immediately, and the law is immediately executory, and thereafter secretary is directed to report back to the committee so that the same can be routed and reported out to plenary for interpolation, debate, and amendment. It's ordered. I'll skip in the agenda and take advantage of the presence of Chair Popoy so that I don't belabor you for more than 30 minutes, Chair Popoy, while you're here. I'll skip to some items of the agenda that I need your opinion on. Item number three, the creation of a media arts university of the Philippines. Idudugtong ko narito, Chair Popoy, yung proposed bills on the creation of a college of medicine in various SOCs and the creation of a college of veterinary medicine in various SOCs. Now first, on the creation of a media arts university of the Philippines. Before asking your thoughts, I presume this is not under UP. This is a totally different university when I read the bill. My question is, how is this different or will be different from mass communications course being offered by some state universities and colleges? And um, what's your position? What's the position of CHED with respect to legislating another university that might offer only a singular or several courses? Mr. Chair, our concern with the bill is that most of the... Uh... Uh, universities and colleges that are public today were created or converted from existing or smaller universities or colleges. Uh, creating one from scratch is a, a big undertaking. Uh, we uh, we uh, think that this is better uh, hosted by existing universities or colleges. As you have said, there are 
uh, colleges and universities that already have very strong media arts programs. And uh, we also uh, uh, would like to put on record that this cannot be under the Commission on Higher Education because CHED cannot be both a regulator and operator of a higher education institution, Mr. Chair. Um, my understanding of the bill, Chair Popo, is that um, it will we will establish another SOC, but yeah. principally for the courses relating to um, media arts. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, as, I, as I said earlier, creating one from scratch is a big uh, endeavor. Uh, you, you will need the significant plantilla items. You will need the uh, infrastructure. You will need a location for the for the uh, proposed new state university. Uh, historically, what happens in the Philippines is that smaller units uh, uh, are converted into, into uh, state colleges, for example, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, agric smaller agricultural schools have been converted into state colleges or uh, uh, branches of bigger uh, public universities are, co are converted into uh, independent state universities and colleges, uh, especially because media arts is already uh, present in many of our public universities. So it might be more prudent to go to that route uh, because it's very difficult to compute a, uh, fiscal or financial requirements for a completely new state college, Mr. Chair. Chair hereby refers Senate Bill Number 1881 to a technical working group with the instruction that the TSN be furnished the office of um, Senator Tulfo, and out of respect for the bill authored by Senator Tulfo for um, his legis to kindly coordinate with the TWG given the comments of Chair Popoy as to how we can move forward but under the TWG, not the mother committee anymore. So ordered. Second query, Chair Popoy, yung mga bill na nag establish ng medica, na medicine at saka um, veterinary medicine, kailangan ba ng batas nito? I can't, my understanding of state universities and colleges is that they can offer courses. And the course they will offer has to be approved by CHED. But um, this is the first time I'm encountering a law to open a course within a state university or college. Your thoughts, Chair Popoy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, actually, we have increased the number of public universities that have medical programs from eight when I started in CHED. We now have 15 uh, state universities and colleges with medical programs. Almost all the new medical programs that have been created were actually not created by law, but these were uh, proposed by the state universities and colleges, and they complied with the requirements for a base hospital, faculty, curriculum, etc. So technically, you really don't need a law to create a degree program. What is important is compliance with requirements. But I am seeing a trend in the House to file bills to create uh, uh, medical programs uh, because uh, uh, my, my, uh, my reading is that if the law is passed, this will be used by the school so that they can get plantilla items from the Department of Budget and Management. They'll be able to uh, ask for a budget to create this and get uh, government support for the creation of uh, medical schools. Uh, but even if the law is passed, they will still have to comply with the requirements in creating a medical program, Mr. Chair. And saka para may batas na mapasa. Diba? Para local bill to. Usually pinapasa na lang to eh. So no harm, no foul if I pass these bills? Um, Mr. Chair, we would like to propose that a specific provision be put, put in these uh, bills or in this law that will require compliance with CHED requirements and that uh, until they comply, they cannot admit students. This is the same requirement that we impose on private universities that when they uh, propose uh, opening programs, until the CHED uh, 
uh, recognizes that they have complied, they cannot accept students. So uh, if we do that, we uh, level the playing field and we adopt the same rules between public universities and private universities with respect to medical programs. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, this provision, uh, this provision uh, can be submitted uh, by the commission. If you want, I can read a proposed uh, uh, provision now that uh, can be incorporated as a standard provision in these bills, which reads the provisions of this act notwithstanding, the establishment of the College of Medicine shall become effective only upon the determination and declaration by the CHED based on the recommendation by panel of experts con constituted for the purpose that the College of Medicine established under this act has complied with the policies, standards, and guidelines of CHED for the establishment of a College of Medicine and offering a Doctor of Medicine program. Uh, provided that the panel may issue such recommendation that the College of Medicine herein established has, has complied with the minimum, re minimum requirements for the program. Uh, if you want, Mr. Chair, we can even include in this provision the requirements uh, that uh, are important in establishing a medical program such as the such as the training hospital, because this is where some of our state universities and colleges are having a problem now. They don't have a level three uh, hospital with four specialization. And, uh, and also put here, as I said earlier, that, uh, that they, should, they shall not be allowed to accept students to their program uh, until uh, the commission has uh, declared that they are compliant with uh, the regulations, Mr. Chair. Um, with your permission and assent, Chair Popoy, um, I will not include the specific requirements since it's in your requirements anyway. I will just simply state or include the provision you mentioned that it, they cannot accept and release until CHED has given them the green light to operate a college of medicine, which among others, as you said, includes a level three hospital. I don't want to include it because, for example, the, the specialization of family med does not require um, partnership of a school with a level three hospital. It can be done with a level one or level two, so it might just complicate matters if they simply want to focus on family medicine, which I understand is required and in earnest need now with the Universal Health Care um, Act. So, hindi ko na Chair Papoy, okay lang? Yes, Mr. Chair, we fully support your position that the Universal Health Care Law actually requires family medicine, uh, except that we've been having difficulty convincing the state universities and colleges to do that. They would want to develop specialists rather than <laughs> general practitioners. So if there are state universities and colleges who would, uh, you know, focus on providing primary health care providers, uh, CHED would be very happy to support that initiative. Medyo hirap lang kami kasi yung mga SOCs ang gusto nila talaga are specialty programs, uh, Mr. Chair. Our state university and college resource is about to file a proposal, um, Chair Popoy, because we have an existing family med program at the Sorsogon Provincial Hospitals in all of our nine hospitals, both level one and level two. Anyway, that's digressing. So I guess the position of CHED would be the same with respect to the creation and establishment of colleges of veterinary medicine, subject to the inclusion of the same provision, but instead of medicine, veterinary medicine. Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. We particularly support this proposal of Southern Luzon State University to develop a, uh, a doctor of veterinary medicine program because in the whole of the region under where, where they are, it is only the Cavite State University that has a doctor of vet med program. And we really need a lot of vet med, uh, uh, you know, graduates in that area. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, I have encouraged SLSU to actually go into it, uh, uh, provided that they follow the requirements, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, medyo magastos ang vet med program, particularly laboratories and equipment. But so long as they comply, 
we support uh, uh, state universities and colleges that want to offer a vet med program, particularly in areas and regions where there is very few or there is none, Mr. Chair. Agreed. So, Chair will make an omnibus order. Insofar as House Bill number 7087, Senate Bill number 1939, Senate House Bill number 7088, Senate Bill number 1949, although I will make remarks with respect to this later on, House Bill number 7090, House Bill number 7397, House Bill number 7398, House Bill number 7412. Um, Chair hereby approves the, the aforestated measure and consolidates those with similar versions in the House and in the Senate, subject to the inclusion of the provision as proposed by Chair Popoy of CHED, that the operation of the colleges of medicine and veterina both veterinary and medical shall only be in effect upon compliance and issuance by CHED with the corresponding approval of um, such colleges and or courses. So ordered, Secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report in order to be routed based on the amended version so that it can be filed in plenary. So ordered, um, Chair Popoy, again, ang papakinabangan ko yung presence mo, tatalon-talon ako ng bill. Ha. Establishing an agricultural university in Florida Blanca. Law? Same reason? Para malagyan ng budget? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. But uh, in the, on the part of the commission, we fully support this uh, particular bill because we have seen in the case of Pampanga, how the local officials, the provincial government, and in particular, former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, has really been helping the two uh, state universities and colleges in Pampanga. This is the Don Honorio Ventura State University and Pampanga State University. They have provided a lot of infrastructure for these two uh, these two SOOCs, uh, uh, including uh, academic buildings uh, uh, and uh, actually for this purpose, uh, uh, the local governments and our national leaders have uh, uh, been very supportive. I was told, Mr. Chair, that you uh, also uh, provided funding for a capital outlay for infrastructure in the uh, in one of the campuses of Don Honorio Ventura, if yes. I'm not mistaken, in Lubao. 50 million. Yeah, and uh, uh, we support it because our concern, uh, Mr. Chair, with many of the SOCs is that uh, the law is passed, but uh, the funding for its critical infrastructure is very slow. But in the case of the two Pampanga state universities, the funding has really been very adequate. And so... We fully support uh, this particular bill, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, seeing how the local officials, the provincial government, and our to. national legislators have supported, to to. supported this too. So. Regardless of the name, Lumang Pangalan ng Committee. Thank you, Chair Popoy. Um, noted, um, Chair hereby orders that um, Senate Bill number. 1935 be approved and consolidated with the earlier filed House Bill, House Bill number 6128, where we conducted a hearing last February and where the committee report is now being routed. Once um, sponsored in plenary, let's include Senate Bill number 1935 and take it into account with the passage of House Bill number 6128. Um, so ordered. Yugi Chair Popoy, kaya na namin ni Spakito. Just one more point, which is the last point. Um, and I'm sure the reason why you are still awake is because of this point. This is with respect to the issue of the reimbursement to state universities and colleges and local universities of um, what they supposedly spent, past tense, um, with respect to enrollees under the Free Tertiary Education um, Act. Would you have a summary of exactly how much um, is owed year on year to uh, 
socks and looks. Total na muna, just submit to us the breakdown. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we have a PowerPoint presentation, if you okay. will allow it to be presented, that uh, looks at the history of this problem, uh, Mr. Chair, so that the amounts are all in the PowerPoint presentation. If you uh, allow, I Mr. Chair, uh, I can be the one to present it, or we can let uh, the Executive Director of Unifast, Ryan Esteves, present it, Mr. Chair. I'll have him present it later. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Just to ask you a question, um, Chair Popoy, um, is COA online? May we ask the representative of COA if she's online right now? So that I can let you go, uh, Chair Popoy. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Asan yung monitor nung... Yes, ma'am. Now, my question is, um, both to Chair Popoy um, and to our COA rep, um, SOCs have been enrolling people based on the capacity of the SOCs and, uh, since we passed the law. Now, I saw the COA report that said may mga overpayments sa ibang state universities and colleges. Um, and, um, well, that's being rectified. But my question is, um, are these considered accounts payable by COA? Let's say may pinaenroll sila based on the capacity of the university, X thousand of students. And then here comes DBM and the national budget saying uh, ito lang yung pera para sa free tertiary education. And then here comes CHED and or DBM saying ito lang yung allocation ninyo sa kada school. Let's say 80% lang ang nabayaran, 20% ng enrollees hindi. Is that considered an accounts payable by COA? Hala, ma'am, paano na yan? <laughs> no, uh, Mr. Chair, the overpayment we have found in our audit is based on the amount billed by the SOCs as against the certified uh, tuition and other school fees, the overpayment. That's why. So, yun yung, uh, that overpayment was already uh, refunded by the concerned uh, SOCs and the so concerned SOCs. Ma'am, 100% of SOCs and LOCs, to my understanding, based on my readings of the various position papers, uses the billing system. Yes. Sir. So, binibill ng SOC, di ba, ang Unifast, ang Unifast Board, ang CHED, tapos papabayaran. Here comes the GAA, here comes DBM, here comes CHED saying, ay, ito lang babayaran namin. Yung balance ba na yun for existing and previous years na hindi covered ng budget, will be considered or is considered an accounts payable. So, utang ba yun na dapat bayaran ng gobyerno? O, bahala na silang balikatin yun dahil hindi na budgetan sa kasalakuyang taon dun sa school year na yun? Aldrin? Okay. Sige. Uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, prior po kasi to academic year 2022 to 2023, the Who reimbursement you, mechanism Aldrin, for... are you? You're from Goa, Aldrin? Yes, po. Yes, sir. I'm the okay. team leader at Chad Central Office. Yes, please. Uh, prior po kasi to academic year 2022, uh, fiscal year 2022, reimbursement mechanism is being instituted for state universities and colleges. So, ibig sabihin po, uh, they submit their bills to... Unifast and CHED, and then Unifast and CHED will process it and disburse the funds. So based po yun sa, sa bills na sinesend po nila. So basically, kung ano po yung billing nila, binabayaran po ni CHED. But uh, beginning fiscal year 2022, so the budget for SUCs are already released by CHED to them directly. So pag meron man pong kulang sa budget, uh, versus actual expenses, for example, ng SUCs, wala pong accounts payable na nare-recognize si CHED based on records. Bakit binago yung sistema? The chair, if I may be allowed. Yes, Popoy. Yeah, uh, prior to 2022, the whole funding for reimbursement of SUCs and LOOCs was put in the budget of CHED Unifast. 
That's why they bill us, we process their billing, and we pay the necessary amount. In 2022, in the bicam of the budget, uh, uh, Congress Which budget? decided... Which budget, Sir Boboy? The, the budget, uh, the National Expenditure Program, when uh, Congress acted upon it in uh, for fiscal year 2022. But so this Congress was in 2021? Did, yes, in 2021 for okay. fiscal year 2022. Okay. What Congress did was to take away uh, more than 20 billion from the budget of CHED and subdivide it and give it directly in the GAA of individual SOCs. Okay. So after that, we have no more legal uh, uh, basis to deal with the SOCs. We have uh, no dealings with them as far as their as their uh, uh, you know reimbursement is concerned. This was determined by DBM already. So uh, we we have no we have nothing to do with the computation of the amount that is included in their NEP or GAA, included. and we have no control over their billing, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. So as far as Chair is concerned, we have no payables because the money is directly put in their GAA. Uh, now, now, Chair Papoy, I understand. I was not in the Senate or in Congress at that time. I was a local official and was not aware that that was done. My question is this. Given that the school year does not coincide with the fiscal year, how can they possibly, how can DBM possibly know how much exactly will they allocate per school if the school itself doesn't, as of yet, know their enrollment, let's say, for the second um, semester or for the first semester, depending on the ikot ng fiscal year. And were they, let's say, yung inallocate ng DBM binabaan compared to the previous year. E may second year na, may third year na, may fourth year na, na kailangan mag-graduate. Anong gagawin ng look? Anong gagawin ng SOC? Uh, Mr. Chair, <coughs> under the old system, even if Unifast already practices cash-based budgeting, meaning we we disburse funds based on the fiscal year rather than an academic year, mm -hmm. we have some flexibility in adjusting the amounts because uh, uh, the aggregate amount is with the uh, CHED Unifast. So kung meron mang kulang o may sobra, depende sa billing, nakakapag-adjust kami throughout the year. So ang computation namin is... Uh, second semester of the previous year and Which first semester of the incoming year. Which but is correct. Given, Plus minus 10, was, di ba? Plus yeah. minus within your ceiling. Yes, na-adjust na namin yan, uh, Mr. Chair, under the old system. Pero nung binigay na directly doon sa kwan, doon sa SOCs, uh, hindi na, the system cannot compensate for uh, for uh, differences in enrollment, for example. The, the other thing, Mr. Chair, that I'd like to bring to the attention of the committee is that parang perfect storm ito kasi the same year that it was given directly to the SOOCs is also the COVID period where the SOOCs dramatically increased their enrollment. May mga SOOCs na umakyat ang enrollment by as much as 30%. During COVID, tumaas talagang enrollment ng SOCs nung panahon ng COVID kasi uh, hindi makapagbayad yung mga bata sa private schools, sa uh, lumipat sila sa SOCs. And therefore, the system uh, cannot compensate for this dramatic increase in enrollment, Mr. Chair. Even the, even the DBM would not be able to predict the dramatic increase in the enrollment of state universities and colleges. So the computation becomes very difficult uh, during this period, Mr. Chair. Tama ka, Chair Popeye. Perfect. Sir, can I include the representative of PASOK in this discussion? Can you divide the screen and include the representative of PASOK, please? May PASOK kanina. Mr. Chair, while waiting for PASOC, yes. may I manifest one Please. more matter? Yes, Chair Baboy. Ang ginawa nila sa, sa budget ng 2022, Mr. Chair, naglagay ng special provision doon na kung kulang yung na-allocate sa mga SOCs, pwede, pwede daw nilang singilin sa CHED. 
And e wala naman man, pera said eh. Exactly, Mr. Chair, because we operate on a fiscal year basis. We already determined the utility of the budget at the first quarter, that is what the Unifast Board did, uh, does, and implement the rest of the money during uh, the rest of the year. So, to parang perfect storm ito. Tumaas ang enrollment ng SOCs, binigay yung pera sa kanila, sisingilin daw kami pag may kulang, Eh, pero yung budget na binigay sa CHED ay kulang na nga because it was cut and uh, we cannot even accept new uh, test grantees anymore. The money is just enough for the reimbursement of looks and also uh, continuing test grantees. So wala talaga kaming ibibigay. The, co the collectibles being claimed by, by the SOOCs is already more than 2 billion pesos. Mr. Chair, we do not have that kind of money uh, in CHED. So these are things that happened uh, almost at the same time, Mr. Chair. Um, may I ask, Ma'am Rosales, um, Ma'am, um, do you confirm the statements of uh, Chair Popoy? Binigay na sa inyo yung pera para sa free tertiary education sa kada SUC? Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. So for FY 2022 po, as, as mentioned, uh, the budget for FHE is actually directly allocated to the uh, SOOCs. So, Wait, uh, before you continue, the same is true for 2023? Yes, Mr. Chair. The, the only concern is, as uh, mentioned by uh, uh, the Honorable Chairperson, the allocation in the FY22 budget was actually inadequate compared to the actual enrollment of SUCs for FY2022. And the same would happen in FY 2023 since enrollment increased uh, during FY 2023. Ma'am, and... ma ma I understand that part, but let me cut you short. Forgive me. Yes, ma'am. Ma um, ang tanong ko, kung alam nyo na pala na yun yung budget ninyo for that school year, as you have seen in the proposed budget, in the GAA of 2022, in the GAA of 2023, for that um, matter, why did you not adjust? Bakit patuloy na in-increase yung enrollment hoping or believing na babayaran na lang kayo? Wasn't there any consideration um, of this uh, fact? So may I ask, um, dun sa binigay na pera sa inyo nung 2022 and 2023, was it sufficient for your enrollees, but not for the increase that was never projected when the budget was deliberated upon, both for 22 and 23? Yeah? You have to be able to unbundle it. Because um, binigay, according to Sheriff Popoy, which you confirmed, binigay na sa inyo yung pere. And yet you continued accepting enrollees. Um... If you look at the budget, I confirm what uh, Chair, Chair Popoy said. Wala silang perang ibibigay sa inyo. Kahit anong kabog nyo sa pintuan ng Chair, wala silang perang ibibigay sa inyo. Ang dapat yung takbuhan, Kongreso, na magpasa ng supplemental budget kung may perang makukuha ang DBM. So again, I, I ask you the question. What became the policy of what was done with respect to SOOCs? Knowing na kulang na yung binigay, hawak nyo na eh. Alam nyo na na kulang eh. Ba't tanggap pa rin ang tanggap? Um, Mr. Family? Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, halos lahat ng SOCs actually ay may kota na po when it comes to enrollment. And uh, the only thing is, uh, sa proposal po kasi ng mga SOCs, uh, naka-indicate po doon basis sa projected enrollment, pero may ceiling po kasi si DBM when it comes to uh, budget sa FHE. So sila po yung naglalagay ng ceiling which is uh, really way below the uh, proposed uh, budget of... Ma'am, iba yung proposed ha? sa mababayaran yung existing enrollees na magsa second year, third year, fourth year. mag increase naman kayo sa first year eh. If ever, kung may transferis, konti lang yun eh. 
So again, can you unbundle the real picture? Yung incre- nung pinasa yung budget, ma'am, nakita na nung suke. Ito yung ceiling nyo ng enrollees, regardless of your proposal. Why did you not work within the proposal of the DBM? Why did the SOC still follow their original plan and proposal? Is that what happened? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yung enrollment po kasi, uh, as what I've mentioned, uh, talagang nagkukota na po ang SOC, pero sobrang mataas po kasi talaga yung demand ng mga Ma'am, 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 I agree. Wala namang problema dun eh. Mataas naman talaga. Ma'am, walang serbisyo ng gobyerno ang sapat sa pangangailangan ng tao. Palagi pong kulang yan. Ang tanong ko, anong legal basis ng SOCs na dahil mataas ang demand, na pinapasok ng pinapasok, knowing for the fact, for a fact, na ito yung quota nga ninyo eh. Um, how was that decision arrived at by the various SOCs? Again ha, so ang gusto ko makita ma'am, pakisubmit on the part of all state universities and colleges. Yung binigay ba ng DBM sapat dun sa babayarang tuition para libre na ng second, third, fourth, kung may fifth year ng lahat ng existing enrollees? Ilang bagong enrollees ang kinover na babayar ng DBM? And I presume, yung sobra sa sinisingil nyo na hindi kinover ng budget, yun yung bagong first year students or yung kukunting transferees on the second, third, or fourth year. Would that be correct? Doon lang naman manggagaling yung additional eh. Karamihan, presumably 80 or 90 percent will come from the first year. Ma'am, please. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, so we'll be submitting the data to your, to your good office as requested. So ma'am, your basic answer to my question is, alam nyo na kung magkano yung budget na BNDBM para sa free tertiary sa tuition fee, pero dahil malaki yung demand, pinapasok ng pinapasok ng mga state college, tapos ngayon naniningil kayo. That's the long and short of it. And demanding that you be paid because you admitted so many enrollees beyond what DBM allocated money for. Would that be correct? That's the doesn't sound good, but that's the long and short of it. Uh, Ma'am, you budget. Ma'am, in your school, you budget. You have a budget. You work with your existing budget. Kulang naman talaga palagi, di ba? Ang problema yeah. lang, tanong ko, ano yung naging... Wala man lang limitasyon na, oy, let's let's not exceed beyond 5% of what DBM allocated. Let's not exceed beyond 10% of what ayun DBM ayun allocated. May ganun ba? O bahala na si Batman? Uh, basta, may demand, basta may demand, sige na. But there was no rule from Ched because they removed it from the hands of Ched. So it was left to the vice of each and every souk. That's why I would like to see. Ano ba yung increase ng enrollment nila beyond the budget given by DBM for that fiscal year to be applied to the two school year, to, to the two semesters of the school year. And you will see, ma'am, I'll give you an example, ma'am. We will most likely see may suk na 5% ng binigay na, nag-exceed ng 5% sa binigay na budget ng DBM, may nag-exceed ng 10%, may nag-exceed ng 8%, may nag-exceed ng 1%, may nag-exceed ng 7%, may suk na nagbawas ng enrollees at sumunod doon sa ceiling na binigay. My question to pasok is, talk among yourselves because it's going to be unfair, ha? Yung sumunod, essentially parang mapipinalay sila for following at yung hindi sumunod at bahala na si Batman, babayaran bigla ng gobyerno. Um, so some will be benefited for clearly violating the budget ceiling if we pay it. Those who followed effectively will be penalized for following. So, please talk among yourselves because the rule cannot be uniform for all souks because the souks decided on their own what to do with this particular issue. And I would like to see that too. How many of the souks followed the rule, the ceiling given by DBM, how many did not, and to what extent did they, did they not follow the ceiling? Having said that, ma'am, um, asan yung COA? 
Pakilagay sa screen yung koa, please. Yeah, Aldrin? Yes, yes, Aldrin. Chair Popoy cited a provision earlier that yung kulang na pera, tama ba, Chair Popoy, ang um, pwedeng singilin sa CHED. Ang problema, Mr. walang Chair. budget yung CHED. Walang item. Kulang yung item ng CHED. So, walang savings yung CHED para dyan. Does this make it an accounts payable? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, no, no. Um, I may be using a technical term na accounts payable, but my point is this actually. Government service to, inabuso man o hindi, nagsarili man o hindi yung suk beyond the ceiling given to them by DBM, the service was still performed. Doon sa mga estudyante, in-enroll nila eh. Nagka-MOE sila. Gumasa sila sa teacher, sa kuryente. If only on the basis of unjust enrichment, um, um, how will COA treat this now? Can it be considered an accounts payable sans a law? Or will you need a law na magpasa kami ng supplemental budget specifically, or i-add namin sa budget ng 2024, specifically to pay these balances. And if we pass a law, supplemental, or in the 2024 budget, um, how will COA treat this? Because this is for the payment of obligations that accrued in previous years. Kinakomplika ko ba, Alden? Pinagdaanan ko kasi yan ng governor ako. Alam ko, komplikado yan eh. So, paano namin gagawin yun? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Chair, in the part of COA, it's not uh, considered as accounts payable. It's because wala pong allotment na binigay kay, kay Chad. Hindi. So, wala pong basis Chad. for... Hindi sa Chad. Sa SUK. May allotment na binigay diretso sa SUK. Kulang. This is not an accounts payable on the part of CHED. It's an accounts payable to SUKS by the government. Not by CHED, kasi as stated by Chair Popoy, directly binabana sa mga SUKS yung pondo eh. Hindi na dumaan sa CHED eh. Yes. Because if it's accounts payable, then the procedure that SUKS have to follow with respect to claiming the payment would be totally different from what they're doing now, which is writing CHED. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Um, Chair Popoy, habang pinag-iisipan yeah. mo, Aldrin. Uh, actually, ang pinangahawakan ng SOCS in the fiscal year 2022 is that special provision na pagkulang pwede nilang singilin yung CHED. That provision was deleted by Congress in the 2023 ka. Uh, uh, so, as far as 2023 is concerned, there is really no legal basis to claim it from Chad because that special provision was struck out by Congress. Maybe no, uh, understanding the issue better in 2023. Wala na sa Chad. Sa suk mismo. Again, the service was performed. I'll give you an analogy, Aldrin. Pinondohan ng gobyerno. Diba? Um, Yung, 10 kilam, yung 1 kilometer na kalye, dahil tumaas ang preso, ang nagawa 900 meters, yung 100 meters, ginawa pa rin, let's say, ng LGU, siyempre, based on unjust enrichment, you should pay. In this case, correct or not, dinagdagan ng suks yung enrollees nila dahil mataas yung demand, how will that now be addressed? How can we pay the suks for the services they performed? And if we don't pay them, clearly it's unjust enrichment. Hmm. Yes, Aldrin. How do we go about it? Yes, I think, Mr. Che, in my opinion, po, no, the best recourse is for the Congress to pass a law with regard to that. To pay them? Yes, Mr. Che. For previous years? Pwede ba Pwede ba kami magpasa ng batas? based on the billing of this, these SOCs, to pay them for yung kulang na binigay sa kanila ng Kongreso for 2022 and 2023. 
whether through a supplemental budget that we will pass this year or through um, the budget of 2024. At kung 2024, magbabayad ba kami ng interest o choice na namin yan? I think, sorry, in my opinion, it's hard to say for prior years if uh, it's okay to, to pass a law to pay the deficiency. But definitely, I think it's good that prospectively, uh, the, the, the SOOCs should be able to have a proposed budget to the Department of Budget and Management that is sufficient for their uh, operation. It will never be sufficient. I'll try to correct it. But my concern is the previous years in Aldrin. 22 and 23. Can we pass a law? Kasi papasa kami ng batas to, sige, pa-flag down nyo lang. Hindi, sabihin mo na sa akin yun kung anong gagawin namin para maayos na. In your experience, how do you pay for a for previous year's obligations? Mr. Sir, sorry, I can't really comment on that. Maybe I should refer it first to our legal form. To who? Matter. Kindly convey to your chairman, Aldrin. He's a good friend, but it's okay for me for him not to attend. But I'd appreciate it if they will send people who can answer all of our questions so that we don't belabor or delay any of the things we want to settle and um, decide on in our um, hearings. But having said that, please come back to us with an answer because we need to settle this one way or the other. Okay, this, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Alden. Chair Popoy, last point. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Mr. Ka bang Chair. Ibalik namin sa inyo yung pondo? Uh, ayaw, ayaw na po namin kasi... In the budget of 2024, ha? 2024 to. Uh, ayaw. The commission does not want the money to be given back to Chad, uh, Mr. Chair, because when it was with us, some of the sooks were complaining na babagal daw kami magbigay ng pera. Actually, the idea of putting it directly to the SOOCs, that proposal basically came from our state universities and colleges. That's why my position then was, uh, since Congress gave it to them, we are happy with that decision because we don't have to, uh, you know, uh, balance uh, you know, a lot of things already. Masakit sa ulo namin dati yan, Mr. Chair. Mas maganda ibigay na diretso sa kanila. No, ang problema ko, Chair Popo, yung mechanism of paying for 2022 and 2023. And number two, yung differential ko may mali naman unless we mandate or you issue guidelines under the Unifast Board, although the money does, did not was not coursed through you, that they cannot admit enrollees more than the budget allocated to them by DBM. Because Mr. apparently Chair? when the money was given to them, di ba, pasalamat ang said na, okay, wala na kami sakit ng ulo, wala nang away sa amin. But, uh, ang nangyari, kanya-kanyang diskarte. Again, merong nagbaba ng enrollment dahil sa inflation. Merong sinunod talaga yung cap. Merong walang pakialam, natanggap lang ng tanggap, tapos naningil na lang. There was no guidance from anyone as to what to do, so they were left to their own vices. Mr. Chair? Was there a Unifast board resolution addressing this matter for 2023, for example? Or Mr. in 2022 Chair? when it was yeah. given to them? Mr. Chair, I think the controlling mechanism should come from the Department of Budget and Management since they are the ones determining the allocation. Because the Unifast board or the CHED has no basis to determine what is the proper increase in terms of the percentage increase in enrollment because we have no legal authority to determine how much money will be allocated. It's a DBM responsibility. No, Chair Bopo, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not talking about the amount of money. DBM, hinulaan man yan, hinugot man mula sa mga tala o sa araw o sa buwan yung amount na inallocate sa school, that's in the exercise of their wisdom. But my issue is, saan kumuha ng lakas ng loob ang mga sok to go beyond the ceiling of enrollees given to them by DBM? Wasn't there any guideline or guidance coming from the Unifast Board? 
although the money that did not go through you anymore, presumably, nung nagbago yung sistema, dapat may nagsabi sa kanila, hoy, covered ba lahat ng enrollees? Meaning yung pupunta sa second year, third year, fourth year, at yung bagong first year. Kung hindi ko, yeah, kung, di ba, yun ang gusto ko malaman, kasi walang rule eh. Again ha, merong nagbaba ng enrollment because of the sa target nila because of inflation. Merong minintain lang and made things do. Merong nag-increase ng walang pakundangan. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yeah. the power to determine the uh, number of students to be admitted is a power of the Board of Regents of individual state universities and colleges under Republic Act 8292. Uh, it's really a decision made by the board, Mr. Chair. So Chad cannot, you know, uh, uh, send out a memorandum saying you can only increase by 2%, 3%, 4%. It uh, is a decision of the board. So the different boards of the SOCs decided individually how to do it. But Mr. Chair, if you want a bigger headache, I will, I will, I would like to tell the committee now. <laughs> Meron mas malaking papadating na problema, Mr. Chair. Hmm, ano yan? The five-year moratorium on uh, SOCs and LOCs that they can not increase their tuition actually lapsed in 2022. So uh, the SOCs now, many of the SOCs, have already passed board resolutions to increase their uh, tuition rates. And they submitted it to CHED. And the position of CHED is we cannot decide on the matter because the reimbursement of the tuition and miscellaneous fees is determined by DBM. So if they send us their uh, decision that they are increasing their tuition fee, we send it to DBM, Mr. Chair, because we cannot act on it. We do not know whether it is correct or not because we are not the ones that determine whether these amounts will be reimbursed. So that is the bigger storm that is coming, Mr. Chair. Um, question, Sir Popoy. Nung dumadaan pa sa inyo yung um, subsidy sa tuition ng SOCs, so I presume before the moratorium was imposed, magkakaiba yung tuition fee nila for the same course? Yes, Mr. Chair. The board of the individual SOCs decide the increase in tuition and miscellaneous fees. Mr. Chair, it is not determined by CHED. Nung nag-moratorium, na-freeze lang yon. Yes, na-freeze for five years, Mr. Chair. Uh, and the five years is up already. So a lot of the SOCs are now saying that they want to increase the tuition and miscellaneous fees. And they send us the decision of their boards and we cannot act on it because we have no legal basis to approve it or to say it is good because we are not the ones reimbursing the money. We cannot commit the funds that are reimbursable, Mr. Chair, because we're not part of the decision making on how much reimbursement they should get. Ano yung basis ng moratorium, Chair Popoy? Batas o memorandum ng Chad? Yung batas, yung RA10931 is specifically included a provision that SOCs and LOCs cannot increase their tuition for five years. Sumasakit na nga yung ulo ko. Let's reset this for another date. I'll excuse you, Poy, para makatulog ka na. It's three o'clock there. Um... We will set another hearing sometime. Kailan balik mo, Chair Bapoy? Uh, I'm, I'm coming back this weekend, uh, Mr. Chair. Ama, I presented my paper on uh, at the uh, Minister's Forum uh, yesterday. So, uh, babalik na ako ng Saturday. So, I'll be there by this weekend. So, before the end of the month, let's call for a hearing. But I'd appreciate it if everyone needed would be live. Namely, said... Representative of PASOK or some schools, but not all schools for sure, DBM and um, COA, so that we can iron this out and file the necessary bills if indeed the bill is needed to pay 
and to clarify what we will be doing moving forward to avoid a similar situation. On the part of PASOK, on the part of COA, on the part of DBM, kindly be ready with your responses given that you have been briefed of this problem during our discussions this morning. So ordered, Chair hereby suspends further consideration of the reimbursement of SOOKs and LOOKs with respect to um, the HAIs covered by RA number 10931. And Chair Popoy, you are excused. We can handle the others through the other representatives and commissioners of CHED para makatulog ka kahit ilang oras pa. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, exiting now to get some sleep. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Popoy, for joining us. Hi. Moving forward. Item number four, Senate Bill number 1908, an act institutionalizing the expanded tertiary education equivalency and accreditation program, ETEEAP, and providing funds therefore. Um, who can, Commissioner Canapi, would you like to comment on this or who can comment on this? My questions are, ano yung existing basis ng programang ito? Kailangan ba tong isa batas? And what is your position on the proposed Senate bill? Mr. Chair, I, I, we have our executive director actually and our director for uh, programs and standards okay. development, Director This Chen. is on the ETEAP? Yung ETEAP, uh, Mr. Chair. You have a what? A presentation? A uh, representative from our OPS. Ah, okay. Sino? Uh, Director Cherry Diego, uh, Mr. Chair. Director Diego? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. She's online. Nakamute kay, ma'am. Ma'am, nakamute kayo. O tayo yung walang sound. Can they adjust? Sabaw tayo. Ito ako. Hello? Ayan, ngayon, okay na. Hello? Okay, okay ma'am, we can hear you. Good morning, Sir Chair. I'm Cherry of the Office of Programs and Standards Development, and it is our office that is currently implementing the Expanded Tertiary Education Equivalency and Accreditation Program. Okay, ma'am. As to your first question, sir, is, um, the commission... Yes, sir. Uh, the, the legal basis, uh, the Commission on Higher Education has been implementing the ETA program since 1997, based on Executive Order 330, adopting the Expanded Tertiary Education Equivalency and Accreditation Program as an integral part of the educational system and designating the Commission on Higher Education as the authority responsible for its implementation. So to date, sir, we have an existing uh, CMO uh, from 1997. We have a revised CHED Memorandum Order for the implementation of the Expanded Tertiary Education Equivalency and Accreditation Program, or so one to Executive Order 330. Do you need the law, ma'am? Um, I think from the discussion with our sir, Chair uh, Devera and our Executive Director of a bill to institutionalize the Expanded Tertiary Education and Equivalency and Accreditation Program because this will provide greater access to education uh, to our Filipino, uh, fellow Filipino citizens and other beneficiaries of the program. Uh, this will allow also um, a sustainable uh, implementation of the program uh, given that there will be a continuous allocation to implement uh, the program as uh, our chair. And um, from our discussion yesterday, uh, we are proposing that there will be um, the creation of a separate unit, uh, just like the, the law that has, been fun, uh, that has been passed, like the transnational education, so that given a wider scope of its implementation, uh, the program will be more efficiently uh, implemented search. How much Thank is you. the budget of CHED for ETEEAP uh, for 2024, 2023 rather? Yes, sir. Um, the, the budget for the ETEAP since the time it was implemented is being allocated under the General, General Appropriations Act. 
uh, for GAA 20 as of 2023, sir, the amount that has been allocated is um, about 2.8 million only, sir, chair. Huh? Sweldo nyo lang yun at saka band paper lang yun eh. Apo. Apo, sir. <laughs> So it was uh, 2,819,000 2, uh, to be exact as of the as of the 2023 gaapo. What is the output and or performance of the office? Um sir with the implementation of the new revised CMO we are we would like to increase the number of a deputized higher education institutions. At, no, at the moment sir uh, Ilan yung nag-benefit na sa programang yan? Based yes, on sir. your records? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, many, in fact, uh, I don't have the exact data now, sir, but from our previous monitoring, our we were able to to produce several beneficiaries, many beneficiaries of the program uh, who have also landed uh, significant positions already, both in public and the private sector. Um, but as to the, the numbers... Past... Ma'am, for the past 16 years, since 1997, can you give me a ballpark figure? Uh, sir, uh, let me just talk to our experts, sir. One minute, Pa. Yes, ma'am. Sir, we, we have, uh, to, to date, our available data is the number of, of graduates from 2019 to 20, enrollment and graduates from 2019 to 2021. Um, that's the available data I have at the moment, sir, but we can provide you additional data if allowed. Uh, from 2019 to 2021, we have an average number of uh, 5,000, almost 5,000 students that have enrolled in the program and graduated about two to 3,000 students, Sir Chair. In fairness, so kung gawin kong 4 million, magiging 10,000 yan at saka 4,000 graduates. Tama ba? Uh, po, uh, perhaps we can increase further, Sir, because with our new guidelines, uh, we are adding now the number of deputized higher education institutions and encouraging as well more of our state universities and colleges to be part of the deputization. So Does with the, the law, Sir Chair, we'll be very, very happy with it. Thank you. The Senate Bill number 1908 already include the latest CMOs of said with respect to the ETEAP? Um, I think our legal attorneys, Paki, have provided the, um, have provided the additional uh, inputs as to regard to our latest Sir Chair. Submit pa lang. We were still manifesting because we do have recommendations on the provisions to be added uh, and to be amended, as well as provisions that we think are necessary, especially in the creation of a uh, ETAP office under CHED and the ETAP technical panel, Mr. Chair. How much is the proposed budget for this office if we create it? We, well, we are still looking at the final figures, but uh, if we are going to look at the possible uh, if we are going to have a rough estimate, uh, it would operate like a regional office. Uh, and our regional offices has a budget of 10 to 15 million, Mr. Chair, for personnel only. So, hindi pa kasama yung sa operations ton. So, roughly around 20, 25 million. Total. From 2 million to 2025. That is considering that uh, we are expecting an increase in the operation and implementation of ETF. Especially, there are a lot of other. Uh, sectors and uh, considerations that would be added like uh, considerations for internally displaced persons, uh, refugees, international refugees, and as well as uh, See, ang pinakumulan mo, dalawang million lang eh. Kahit naman gawin natin 20 times 10 na yan eh. Easy lang. Um, chair hereby approves Senate Bill number 1908, but will refer it to a technical working group so that SHED can input all of its proposed amendments, including a specific amount for the budget for its initial implementation and thereafter for the same to be immediately routed 
to the members of the committee so that the same can be referred to plenary for deliberation, amendment, and approval. Spaki kayo na bala? Kaya na yan sa isa. Isang TWG lang yan. Kaya na yan. Yes, Mr. Chair. Especially with your 50 million for the program. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, um, yes, Director Jago. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Um, moving forward, um, item number five, one cadet from each congressional district to be admitted to the PMMA. We have the representative of the PMMA, right? Earlier? Pakilagay sa screen. Commodore Abutal, yeah. sir. Good morning, chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, sir, I have a basic question. I've seen similar proposals for UP, PUP, na dapat tumanggap daw sa kada probinsya, sa kada munisipyo. Ito clearly pinropose ng Kongreso, sa kada distrito ng Kongreso. Ang tanong ko, sir, practical, because we face this issue. That's why we never passed a similar bill for UP, for example. Yes, sir. Um, one, paano kung walang nag-apply mula sa congressional district na yun? Two, paano kung may nag-apply pero bumagsak naman sa entrance? Uh, what, what's the outcome? Sir, please, can I have your thoughts on this? Yes, sir. Uh... That is also one of uh, the several... Uh, ah, you have several. Please enumerate them all to give me an excuse yes. not to pass this. Yes, one is, uh, one of our iteration in the bill is that uh, each applicant must comply with the requirements set forth by the PMMA Board of Admissions regarding the qualifications of uh, applicants. Number two, each applicant must pass all the procedures of the admissions process, such as the entrance examinations, the neuropsychological examinations, and medical uh, dental uh, screening. Number three, he or she must uh, complete and pass the one month uh, probationary period before uh, appointment as a fourth class midshipman. And uh, the she or uh, he or she must abide with the academic uh, all academic training uh, rules and regulations <laughs> the uh, if in case uh, with uh, uh, the freshman uh, or the applicant uh, will uh, 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 based on the congressional district uh, i siya po i endorse ng uh, corresponding uh, congressman of the district and uh, he has to undergo all the processes. And if he does not pass the processes, then uh, there is there is a, a continuing selection coming from the national selection, which we are having uh, currently. So, Hello, sir. I want to know if you Rufus to, ni Congressman Rufus. To. Yes, I'm sir. sure many applicants are coming to the district and they represent the people. 10, 20, Alang nga namang bigyan niya ng endorsement. Lahat, alang nga namang isa lang ang bigyan niya ng endorsement. Away lang yan eh. Um, yes. So my question, sir, is mas marami ba yung aplikante na makapasok sa PMMA kaysa sa slots na binibigay o tinatanggap nyo? I presume the answer is yes. Definitely, sir. Now, how do you prioritize, let's say, 200 applicants? You only have 100 slots. What is your basis in prioritizing um, the 200 applicants for the 100 slots you will give out? Anong yeah, policy will, of PMMA? And, uh, we will still maintain the current policy of uh, who is the most qualified among them and who has uh, completed the screening set forth by the academy. Based on what? What will um, make someone more qualified than another? There is an, an examination, a national examination given to everyone. Uh, and uh, the uh, the dilemma of the academy minister, sir, if I may uh, give you the current information as of now, based on what we have, um, based on the gathered data we have from our registrar, the highest number of uh, uh, second, third, and fourth class midshipmen 
uh, or women are enrolled in uh, who are enrolled in school year 2020 to 2023 uh, came from national capital region uh, or Metro Manila. The second class, our second class is our uh, third year. Um, only 20, uh, 22, our third class is 36. Our fourth class or the first year is 41. On the contrary, the highest number of first class cadets, these are our fourth, uh, fourth year, come from uh, uh, Cordillera Administrative Region, Kalinga with 25. Uh, it should be noted that the number of fourth class nor neither nor neither fourth class nor second class student came from region one ilocos uh, uh, Zur, while there is a lone cadet or a second class who came from uh, region uh, 4b romblon accordingly according to our record some of the provinces only bear one cadet or cadets uh, on the other hand sa aming admissions office uh, there were 5,255 examinees who uh, takers in 2021. It, it rose to 10,800 in 2022. Uh, and uh, the highest number is from Region 4A with 831, followed by Region 3 with uh, 557. Sir, applicants to, uh, with sir, applicants to, uh. so on, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, these, these are applicants. These are applicants. Okay. And uh, uh, yung dung pumasok, sir, yung mga nakapasa, is actually, uh, based on our demography, uh, yung mga nakapasa na, o nakagraduate ng 2020 ay 240. But ang pinakamarami dito ay uh, uh, nasa Cordillera Administrative Region, Region 4, and uh, uh, coming from Visayas in Mindanao, there were only around 7% uh, in Visayas and roughly 8% uh, 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 in Mindanao and 8% in Visayas Region. So mostly our the demography of our cadets, I came from uh, Luzon. And uh, our intention is uh, that the same as uh, us in the government, the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy as a government institution which seeks ways to provide uh, sustainable means to support the advocacy on peace and development. And uh, if we can provide an equitable distribution of at least we can provide one cadet per district, uh, we can support uh, peace and development across the country. Sir, uh, Sir, let me let me cut you. Yes, yes sir. Sorry. Saan saan ba kayo may school o campus sa Pilipinas? As of this time, sir, uh, wala pa kami campus. Only that we have a, a, an approved law to establish a campus in uh, Cagayan de Oro. Pero wala pang campus, sir. Um, so saan saan kayo merong facility ngayon? BMMA. Uh, only in Sambales. Isa lang. Yes, sir. Eh, kaya naman pala, tiga ko dilira nag apply malapit-lapit lang eh. Malapit, sir. Oh, so we would like to at least give uh, the ano, the chance also doon sa buong Pilipinas. How much Kasi does it now, cost? Sir, how much PNMA does it cost cadets, to yes, put up a school? How many, wait. How much, how many enrollees do you have, how many enrollees do you accept per year sa first year? In the first year, we have now uh, 368 ang, nakapas ang nakapasok ngayon, sir. Out of 11,000 applicants? That's right. Um, I think with respect to schools, it's a question of geography kasi. Kung saan malapit, siyempre mag apply um, yung mga nakatira malapit dun. Correct, sir. Um, sir, I would like to uh, uh, give you some information about the PMMA. Because uh, PMMA is a uh, ang selection ng uh, cadet is national in nature, not the geograph geographic ano, uh, area. And uh, um, all of the cadets, as once they uh, while, while they are still in uh, the academy, ay employed na sila. There are already uh, companies who uh, uh, take them. On the third year, sumasampa na sila sa barko with the international shipping companies. Kaya uh, Yung aming projection, 
ay at saka experience especially now mas marami po yung uh, company na kumukuha kaysa sa naibibigay na namin we have a positive problem kasi uh, this year we have only 45 shipping companies na nabigyan ang aming partner is 55 so the clearly na kung may increase namin yung capacity uh, and the beneficiaries of PMMA program, we can provide more benefits to the entire country. Sir, question. How much is your budget to run that school? We have, ang aming, ano sir, ngayon is 300, 300 million. Uh, so I presume the same amount is necessary kung magtatayo tayo sa Cagayan de Oro, sa Cebu, or sa Bacolod, o sa Ililo? Para may Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao kayo? Uh, yes, sir. So presumably, kung magtatayo tayo ng isa sa Calabarzon, if you're in Zambales, isa sa Cebu, Bacolod, or Iloilo, isa sa Davao or Cagayan de Oro City, so that will be times three, four, um, three times four, 120. Ah, uh, 1.2. Diba? Now, my next question, sir, is sino yung mga competitors ng PMMA sa private uh, sector? Ang competitor, sir, ng PMMA, actually, we don't compete. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, I, I use the word loosely, uh, pero who else is providing okay. the same services or course? We have okay. around the 80 uh, uh, private institutions, mar maritime higher institutions. Okay. Covered kayo ng free tertiary education, sir, di ba? Um, Yes, sir. Even before, ang PMMA po ay subsidized na ng government. Hindi kami naniningil ng uh, wala, tuition. Ang tuition fee ng PMMA po ay uh, libre na even before. Okay. Um, chair hereby refers um, House Bill Number 6994 to a technical working group. Kindly invite the principal authors of this measure. Um, to refocus the bill, instead of mandating that there be at least one student or cadet from each congressional district, for us to instead pass a law that will establish additional campuses or facilities of the PMMA in, um, in um, Calabarzon, in the Visayas, either Bacolod, Cebu, or Iloilo, and in Mindanao, either in Davao or in um, Cagayan de Oro, and to appropriate the corresponding funds, therefore. Additionally, to consider including an item in the national budget of either this year or from savings or next year for... Um, Philippine merch for merchant marine courses to be prioritized or included in the priority list of the tertiary education subsidy of the uh, CHED while we are constructing the additional facilities and or campuses of the PMMA. Kindly coordinate with the congressional offices of the authors, and if they agree, that's the version we will pass. Otherwise, I will not pass it in this form. So ordered. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. You are excused, sir, para makapagtrabaho na kayo sa ibang bagay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good day, sir. God bless. Thank you, sir. Likewise. Hmm. Moving on, chronologically. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in the membership of the TWG, would, uh, Chad would want to be part of the technical working group. Halabira! Sama si Spocky! Si Idira. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Thank you. Under ba sa yan, Spocky? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. It's One of still the considered as uh, SUCs. Uh, it's still considered as an SUC, though it is uh, its nature is similar to the PMA, Mr. Chair. Okay. Chair would like to take SBN 1902, 1918, 1948, 1967, and 2024 together on the establishment of TESDA training and assessment centers. May we have the ch the test there represented? Ah, we have we have it here. Um, sir, sir, pare pare naman ibe. And I know the position of Tesla. As a policy, it is delegated already to the LGUs. 
Diba? I, mean, I know that. But you also heard earlier na yung mga congressman pinapasa ito mga batas na to para mapondohan, para ano. And the policy of the committee has been to let it go and to allow it. Because at the end of the day, if it's not funded, you can't do it anyway. Diba? But my, my, my curiosity was aroused with respect to the bill of Senator Marcos, Senate Bill Number 1902. Wala bang test that center sa Quezon City? Bakit kailangan magpasa ng batas na mag-establish ng TESDA sa Quezon City? Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of this uh, yes, sir. distinguished committee. Yes, sir. Uh, as to the question on uh, the availability of training center at Quezon City, we have actually the Quezon City Lincoln Bayan Skills Development Center, which is a TESDA administered training center, sir. So ano to? Para saan to? I don't get it. At sa sobrang yaman ng Quezon City, parang mo ng awa at utang na loob, kaya na nilang pondohan yan. Quezon City is practically, if not the richest city in the country. Hindi nila kaya ito, utang na loob naman, di ba? Parang hindi ito tama yan. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, I, I, uh, that is our, actually the position of TESDA right now. The direction of TESDA is to, if we are working now on the devolution of our provincial training center at uh, an initial stage uh, in compliance, of course, to Section 29. And this has been also the, the recommendation of ADB study. And so we, uh, because ang, uh, we, as of now, we have actually 183 TESDA technology institutions, the 57 our test that research schools, no problem with this, and the regional training centers, one per region, and we have act the original 43 training center as plus new, 60 new training centers. Our situation now is, while we, uh, while TESDA was able to uh, uh, request uh, from DBM uh, positions for these training centers, uh, the problem is we don't have MOEs, and actually, we do not have right now uh, a fund to provide the tech the equipments that will run the technology programs of the centers. Well, sir, actually, we have about over a trillion pesos worth of unfunded loss. <laughs> I mean, Congress decides which ones to fund, which ones not to fund on any given year. Now, meron bang, I presume, ang training at assessment magkaiba? That is also one thing, Mr. Chair. And training, kayo mismo yung pagwa-provide ng equipment, kayo magduturo, kayo ganun. Yeah. Assessment is, kayo mag approve ng program ng private sector na mag alok ng course? Tama ba? There are two things, sir. Uh, tama naman, sir, na the training, the training program is different from the assessment program. The training program is run by tech that's the technology institutions and the private TBIs. The assessment centers, that's why we are about to to comment on that, that the assessment center should not be part of a training center in the title because the assessment center is governed by a, our Philippine Competency Assessment Certification System that is given to an institution by virtue of accreditation when they comply with the requirements. And you accredit? We accredit, sir. It's TESDA that accredits. So, kailangan pa ba ng assessment center? Sir, the... Uh, it should not be part of the title of the institutions because this is given to an institution uh, per program and it's not actually referring to the institution. It's about the pro like you're an assessment center for commercial cooking NC3 or an assessment center for machining, it's like that. Only upon uh, compliance with the requirements. And these are being assessed every every year actually if they comply with the requirements and if they did not comply with sustaining the you know the quality requirement, then it is taken out from the center uh, institution. So, isa-isang ko ba? Isa-isang ko, sir. Oh. Quezon City, meron tayo. Imposible wala. Meron, sir. Ba? Aside from private establishments offering various TESDA accredited yes. trainings. Yes, ba? sir. Yes, sir. Sa Cagayan de Oro, meron din. Meron din, Mr. Chair. Pero sa Barangay Kamamanan, wala. Yes, sir. Our tra uh, provincial training center is situated in uh, palalan yata palalan barangay well, malaki ang kagayan de oro okay. gano'ng kalayo ba doon yeah. can we find out because yes, uh, um, chair would like um, the secretary to coordinate with senator Marcos what her intentions are because there is a training test the training center in Quezon City there is a wala pang wala pang lugar kung saan sa Quezon City malaki din naman ang Quezon City Pero wala naman siya in-identify na lugar para mas specify na may makita na particular na lugar eh. 
Number two, in Cagayan de Oro, same. There is a TESTA training center there, and I want to find out how far it is from the existing TESTA training center, and if this is really necessary. Um, in Surigao del Norte, is there a test in the province first, sir? Is there a TESTA training center there? Again, kindly communicate with the Office of Senator Marcos. Hindi ka Senator Marcos mismo inquiring. How far is the municipality of Dapa um, from the existing agricultural school and test the training center to be able to see if it is really necessary? Um, district office in the city of Davao. Kindly also coordinate with them and find out. I'm sure there is also a test the training center in Davao. Um, where? Anong district? Anong district office? Yeah. Tatlong district. Ilan ba district ng Davao? Congressional. Tatlo o apat? I think there are three districts. It, they need to specify it. Yes, sir. Uh, we are in support of the district because it is the of a district that the office is different from the training center. Ah, okay. In the city, uh, city of Davao. I'm sorry. Sam, in district office nyo? Uh, ngayon is in Davao del... We have two, Davao del Norte and Davao del Sur. So, uh, the, Doon pa kayo meron? Well, Davao uh, City used to be part of yeah, the bigger Davao del Sur, but yeah, it covers actually as uh, existing structure. It covered uh, Davao City, but right now, sir, actually there was an initiative, uh, initiative to actually put an interim manning of uh, for Davao City. Right now, we were able to request positions from DBM, and they were able. May to office put, uh, na kaya pero interim, and we would like it to be covered. So nagrent right kayo? Yes, sir. Magkano budget ang kailangan? Sir, uh, magkano budget ang kailangan? Usually a provincial office, Mr. No, district office. Though. A district office, yeah. A district office, actually, at an average, our MOO there is... Uh, the manning there that we have requested actually is provided. Uh, we have nine manning, nine, nine, nine uh, personnel. MOO usually at about three million at average. Um, total? Yeah. What kind of total? I, I don't. I will kindly provide. convey yes, to the secretariat so that we can include it. Yes, Mr. I want Chair. a specific amount. Yes, Mr. Chair. Finally, test the training center in Isulan. So, wala kayo sa Sultan Kudarat? Meron kami sir, Pete, uh, the provincial training center of Sultan Kudarat at uh, Waya Barangay. Where? Which municipality? It is in Lambayong. So, Lambayong, Mr. Chair. Ah, wala sa Isulan? Wala, sir, Mr. Chair. Eh, nandiyan yung mga tao, eh. <laughs> we, will, we will also uh, study the matter, sir. And diba? We'll coordinate with the Office yeah. of Senator Marcos, too. How okay. far it is with the existing training center. Chair hereby orders. Um, Senate Bill Number 1967, approved. Um, Secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report and include the estimated budget needed to establish a district office in the city of Davao, and in so far as Senate Bill Number 1902, 1918, 1948, and 2024 is concerned, um, to coordinate with the Office of Senator Marcos to specify the areas, if given the fact that there are existing TESDA training centers in these provinces, Kindly also inform her of the policy of TESDA insofar as the evolution is concerned of TESDA training centers. And should this push through, remove the uh, um, anong word mo? skills development? Ah, assessment. Tanggalin yung word na assessment. Gayahin na lang nila yung ginawa nilang build din ng same office na training center lang as found in 2024. So ordered. Thank you, sir. You are excused, sir. Kung may iba ka pa lakad. Kasi puro mga universities na hindi take up namin na puro shed na to. Thank you, sir.
Moving forward, item number 11, Cebu Technological University System. Who will um, comment on this from Shed? We have our uh, regional director from Region 7, uh, Mr. Chair. Director? Paul Cubarubias. Cristobal, Mr. Chair. Director Cristobal, can you kindly place oh. Director Cristobal? Let me see. Uh, Good morning. Technological Good morning, University. Mr. Ah, ah sino? Who? Uh, may OIC pala ngayon, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Sino? Uh, I will represent. The regional director also, we'll sir, represent. Mr. Chair. Anjan din si <laughs> Director Cristobal. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair. And who else? The chair of the board. Po, the board member. Sir, sir, most. But ni sa ilagay don, but papala. Sir, ayun ta physical. Ah, ito. Ah. Okay, sir. Some questions. For the record, uh, ano bang kaibahan ng university sa sa university system? I know that UP is a system, but what's basically the difference for your record? I, I will just uh, discuss uh, to the esteemed chair and members of the committee on higher technical and vocational education, especially to our Honorable Senator Francis Escudero, to the sponsors of Congress, uh, Honorable Ch Ched Commissioner Joe Mark M. Libre, Ched Chair Popoy de Vera III, and other officials. Uh, good morning, everyone. Cebu Technological University converting into a system for House Bill Number 6914 is the second biggest state university in the Philippines with more than 68,000 students and 30 campuses comprising of both extension and satellite campuses. Cebu Technological University is the CHED level four, that's the highest level, and one of the best universities in Asia. The Cebu Technological University has four credible, credible rankings as revealed by the Commission on Higher Education as follows. The QS or the Quacquarillo Simons ranking, THC or the Times Higher Education Impact ranking, THC or Times Higher Education War or World University rankings, and the War or World University with Real Impact. As such... Um, sir, sir, sorry. Um... Para mong binabasa yung resume ng Cebu Technological University. Okay na yun. Um, I just need to find out for the record. And you will submit that position paper anyway. For the record, what is the significance or difference of converting the Cebu Technological University into a university system? And yeah. does this need to be a law? Uh, honorable Chair, uh, the first one here is that our, our enrollment is... Now that is more than 68,000 and we re really need budget, additional budget. No, it's not a question of budget. And then the bill seeks to convert it into a university system. Mm -hmm. What is the difference that it is only a university and not a university system? That's my question. Yeah. That's the question that will be asked of me on the floor. So begin more than sagot. So I will... Uh, What's the difference? What's the significance? Why do you want it? Attorney Marby, I, I will explain, explain the, hmm? the Cebu Technological University. Attorney Marby. Hindi, ikaw ang tiga dun eh. Bakit nyo gusto to? Why? Because uh, your perspective first. Answer it. We, re we really need the the additional funding, and then the 30 campuses, we have uh, 17 uh, campuses or satellite campuses, and we have 13. That sir, is I know that. I know that. What's the difference? Sir, I can convert this into a system and not give you the money. <laughs> or I cannot convert into a system and add, add, add money to your budget. So why convert it into a system? Anong pagbabago, anong difference, anong significance? Mm. All of your campuses are governed by the same Board of Regents. Diba? Anong... Why are you asking to be converted into a system and not an existing budget lang ang kailangan nyo? Hindi, hingan nyo na lang ng budget ng Kongreso. Ba't pa kailangan gawing system? What's the point? Uh, we're in now the, the, the big uh, university in, in Cebu. And... Uh, we 
we have to uh, to, to the, the the additional uh, the additional population or the number of uh, students for the for the north for the south and the uh, metro cebu so we have to uh, classify the different uh, ex extension and satellite campuses and uh, in including the the, the ex extension campus campuses uh, honorable chair is uh, the two the 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 13 campuses is not non stand alone so we say chair budget Chair would like to recognize Commissioner Libre. Yes, sir. Can you answer the chair's question? Magandang umaga to our Good morning, sir. Chair, uh, Honorable Senator Chises Codero. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to zero in that the governing board uh, fully support on the conversion of the university into a system. One of the major uh, tenets reasons for this, uh, Mr. Chair, is as to the complementation of the uh, services and even as to the programs. Uh, Cebu Technological University is the biggest uh, university uh, in Cebu. And as to the programs, it complements, uh, Mr. Chair, relative to the engineering, science, information technology, man uh, management, and even the uh, veterinary medicine for that matter, Mr. Chair. The second one is that um, CTU, Mr. Chair, is that because of the geographic number of um, campuses, Mr. Chair, with almost 30 campuses, 17 for that matter, uh, comprised also with the satellite campuses, uh, the extension campuses cannot manage per. Uh, Cannot be managed by the local unit uh, by the look uh, by the local government uh, unit, Mr. Chair, because of the funding uh, provision. That is why, if you look at in uh, the bill number seven two three five, Mr. Chair, uh, referring to the integration of the Manhug, that that will be also include among the thirteen extension campuses. Um, this system will somehow address that the operations of the local government units can also be uh, very helpful for the university system. And uh, as mentioned also, Mr. Chair, that the, uh, the number of population as enrolled dated today, it's almost 68,000. So that is why the proposal of the university system, it will be covered into three areas, Mr. Chair. There will be a north and also there will be a metro Cebu and also the south. And this will also be a very helpful to the operations and the governance of the uh, university system of Cebu Technological University. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sir, sorry, sir. I still don't see it. Eh? Um, you are now a university with 30 plus campuses, right? Um, you're governed by the by a board of regents. You're the chairman. Diba? Under the law that created the Cebu Technological um, University. Um, what will change? Anong magbabago kung naging system na kayo? Hindi ko mag eh. You can decide on whatever it is you want to decide. You can propose a law to include the Dumanog campus, extension campus to be a regular campus. But when you make it a Cebu Technological University system, so what will change? Anong magbabago sa current way that you run things? Anong magbabago? I'll give you an example. Pag ginawa natin system to, Kung may re-election yung presidente niya, pwede mag election kasi bagong unit to. <laughs> Babo naman na rason nun. So, anong rason ba't natin kinoconvert into a system? What will change with the way CTU is run? What will change with respect to how things are done? Once we call it a system. Isa-isayin ko sa'yo, to give you an example. Yung composition pa ng Board of Regents magbabago sa existing CTU? Pag naging system yan? Will it change? Did you add any new members in the Board of Regents? There will, uh, Mr. Chair, may I answer, Mr. Chair? Yeah, please, please, sir. 
uh, there will be three chancellors for that matter, Mr. Chair. Wala pa tayo sa chancellor, nasa Board of Regents pa lang tayo. Y yes, will Mr. there be a new composition of the Board of Regents if it becomes a system compared to the existing CTU? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, the same thing with University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines. Uh, they also have this... Uh, Claveria campus, a uh, Claveria, uh, for that matter, Mr. Chair, and also the main. So they have two chancellors for that matter, Mr. Chair. Sir, and we're talking of chancellor. The now. chancellor is not a member of the Board of Regents. I'm talking of the Board of Regents, particularly Section 5 in the proposed bill, in the House bill. Magbabago ba yung composition ng Board of Regents pag naging system siya? Uh, it will be the same, Mr. Chair. Same. I'm asking, uh, what's the difference if you convert it into a system and if you simply stick to CTU? And if you're asking for more money, then let's just add more money. Section 6, powers and duties of the board. May bago bang power na binibigay sa board under the proposed conversion into a system o wala? Again, uh, um, are you, do you see the point, um, Commissioner? Na, what's the difference? Aside from nomenclature, what will be the difference? Is there any new power that you're given to the board, given, giving to the Board of Regents, that now that it will be, if it will be a system? Magbabago ba yung quorum? Your meetings ng board, magbabago ba? Your um, powers and duties of the president, magbabago ba? Kung chancellor lang ang magbabago, edi amendahan na lang natin yung, I mean, I don't, Ano ba to Progression ba to Ang pinakamataas na uri at klase ng university, pag tinawag mong system, wala yata ang batas na ganun. Yes. So, uh, what's the point? What's the point in... I don't get it, eh. Yes. Ano yes, sir, please. Um, Dr. Ancheta. Yes, the, sir. The, the case is really... There are also some, some looks converting it into CTU. So, like, like for example, the Consolation Community College, and we are now converted into... Uh, CTU uh, ca campus. That's not in the bill. Campus. So there are other... But that's not in the bill. That's that is... not in, in the bill. Even the even the Dumanhog extension campus into a regular campus, that's not in the bill. That's in a separate bill. Mm -hmm. Sir, my question is simple enough. Forgive me if I'm getting um, impatient, but What's the difference? Basic naman yung tanong eh. Pag ginawa nating system, anong magbabago? Kasi hindi nyo naman sinama yung look na isasama nyo na sa CTU. Yung dumanog, hindi nyo naman sinama rito sa bill na to. Pag system na, hiwalay na bill pa nga eh. Um, so what, what will change? Why do you want to be a system? Sang batas ba nakalagay na pag system na kayo, ah, biglang liliwanag ang mundo. Magkakapera kami bigla. Lalaki bigla yung budget namin. Wala namang ganun eh. So, why do you want to be a system? Other than the nomenclature change na CTU system, inisa-isa ko na, di ba? Composition ng board. Oh. Hindi, o. Oh. Um, power ng board, pareho. Term ng president, pareho. May isang klarong pagbabaga because there's a Supreme Court decision on this already as Maka will confirm. Pag binago ko to into a system, kung sino mang presidente, hindi na pwede mag election na incumbent, pwede siya mag election pa rin, depende sa lalagay natin provision dito. But that's the only difference. So, again, sir, kindly explain to me and make me understand because that will be asked on the floor. What's the difference? If any, if you, convert, if you pass this bill, anong pinakaiba nito sa existing charter ninyo? Commissioner Libre said, magkakaroon ng additional chancellor. Ede, amyendahan natin. Kung kailangan nyo, amyendahan natin yung charter niyan to add additional chancellors for the other campuses. But what's in a system? Meaning, saan mo nakasulat yan? Please, anyone who can respond. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Libre. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to answer Mr. Chair. Uh, number one, Please. Mr. Chair, as to the composition of the governing board, aside from the what I've say, mentioned pertaining to the Chancellor, Mr. Chair, uh, representation of the non-teaching, Mr. Chair, uh, non-teaching personnel, but because as of now, Mr. Chair, uh, what we have is only the uh, faculty uh, representative for that matter, Mr. Chair. And second, Mr. Chair, is the one that you asked about Dumanhook Extension Campus. Uh, it's 
it's in the organizational structure, Mr. Chair, as what proposed uh, and duly approved by the board, Mr. Chair, that is within the main campus. So the 13... Uh, no, but you can approve that in the board. Eh? So we will go there later. Why are you? Uh, why is the congressman asking us for a law? In approve na pala ng board eh. Ba't pa namin kailangan ipasa sa batas yan? In the manhug. But anyway, so ngayon, walang non-academic personnel rep sa board ng CTU? Yes, Mr. Chair. There's none, Mr. Chair. Now, again, ah. so ibig sabihin mo, no, pag system, magkakaroon ng representative bigla ang non-academic personnel, or can we just amend your charter and not complicate things by... I mean, again, ah, saan ba galing yung system na yan? Sino ba nag-invent? Alam ko, UP system ang UP, pero hindi ko pinagkakait yun, ha? Ah. Sinasabi ko lang, saan galing yun? Then let's amend your charter. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. The university system, Mr. Chair, will uh, greatly strengthen the university's capacity, especially for the contribution in the regional development and address the evolving needs of the industries and the communities, especially in uh, Cebu province, Mr. Chair. And by the establishment of these specialized campuses, uh, for that matter, Mr. Chair, referring also to the colleges, the university system will also focus on the specific fields of study in the industry, aligning Commissioner, the Commissioner Libre, yes, the Mr. university Chair. system can do that. The university can also do that. Saan ba galing itong salitang system na to? I mean, system is merely, university system is merely a nomenclature. Eh. Again, eh, I can convert this bill into an act amending the charter of the CTU and put all of these there. And specifically, I meant certain provisions of your charter. Adding a system to your name will not magically change things. When you say the system, the university system will, the university can do that too. I want to understand because I will be asked for sure. Kung ako nga tinatanong ito, tatanungin din sa akin yung mga kasamahan ko rito. What makes it, I mean, ano yan? Parang doctorate ba yung system? Pag university lang, parang master lang yun? Pag college yan, parang college degree ka lang. Um, tell, me, tell me what? Now, all of these changes you're mentioning, I can remove the word system and simply amend your charter. Mas simple pa yun, mas hindi pa ito titingnan. Pag nilagay ko yung system, ang tatanin pa lagi, so who are qualified to be a university system and who are not? What is Chad's policy on that with respect to who are qualified to be a system? Can all state universities and colleges apply to be a system if they have more than one campus? Should they have at least 10 campuses before they can be called a system? I don't know what the rule is. So make me appreciate why. That was my very first question. What's in a system? Why, why do you want to be a system compared to merely CTU? Magiging CTUS ngayon kayo? What? Or CTU pa yun ang gagamitin nyo? CTU system? Actually, honorable, yes, honorable chair, uh, we we have different components from from a university and LGU to convert into one system in Cebu because you know. We have it now, eh? Yeah. They're now under CTU, which is still called university without a system. So it's functioning under sila sa inyo. They already gave you the right, yung diploma nila, yung certificate nila, di ba? CTU na. Without being called the system, without even this law, ha? Without this law, they're already under you. Binigay na ng LGU, di ba? So, again, what are we... Naging campus lang siya, di ba? Kaya nga sa Cebu, din divide yun, di ba? North-South. Sorry, sir. Um, I'm not nitpicking. I just need to understand why. Somebody, um, Commissioner Libre or Popeye or whoever can answer. How many uh, university systems do we have anyway in the country? Out of curiosity. Ang alam ko ang UP system ang tawag. Mindanao State University system. And USTP, Honorable Chair. 
USTP, University of Science and Technology of the Philippines. System and tawag? Yeah. System. But they don't include it in their acronym. USTP pa rin eh, UP pa rin yun, MSU pa rin yun eh. Wala naman nagsabing UPS, wala naman nagsabing MSUS, wala naman nagsabing USTPS. Diba? So their USTP system, UP system, MSU system. So, these laws were passed separately. So, ano ba ito? Pag gusto mo nang maging kalibel ng MSU, ng UP, ng USTP, mag apply ka na rin maging system? I mean, I... Kailan ba nasimulan yan? Sino una naging system? Three years na UP? Apple chair. Sunod, MSU? Okay. O USTP? MSU. MSU. MSU, USTP. That, that, Support system ka ngayon? No, Honorable Chair, no, sis, no system in the Visayas. Only in, in Luzon and the Mindanao. Ano nga ang meron sa system yun ang stop na itindihan? Make me understand, sir, please. Fine. Y walang, y walang, uh, walang sok na may word na system sa Visayas. Okay. Fine. But please tell me, make me understand, what qualifies one to be a system other than a law that says it's a system? Policy-wise, where do we draw the line? When will we say it is now a system and when will we say it is not yet a system? Depending on sino mag ito, sino mag ito. What's Chad's policy, if any? Or anyone who become, wants to become a system, you will say yes to it. Since if the board agrees to it, since a Chad commissioner sits in the board, then the Chad supports it automatically. What if all of a sudden any uh, five Soaks apply to be, uh, want us to do our work and pass a law na maging system din sila. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Libre. Uh, before our Executive Director, Haro, Mr. Chair, I only have two points, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. I, in, in addition to what, what I mentioned earlier, that it will really strengthen the whole uh, Cebu province, Mr. Chair, as to the regional development, it will address the <coughs> needs of the indus industries. Se uh, second, Mr. Chair, is that uh, right now, Mr. Chair, the university system, uh, if the uh, if the honorable uh, chair and the committee will approve, this will somehow facilitate a more complementation as to the decision making, Mr. Chair, and governance. This will provide it an autonomy because right now, Mr. Chair, everything is actually centralized within uh, the university. So uh, this system. Um, will somehow also help in terms of the decision making and governance and um, last Mr. Chair is that there is no system in Cebu. Yeah. Maybe we, we can also have our executive director Haro. Attorney Haro, Mr. Chair. Sir, sir, there is no university system in Cebu. I agree with that. But how many campuses do you have, sir? 30, 30 campuses. 30 chair. Chair. All 30 campuses are now being run by CTU without the word system. Correct? Correct? So, um, nilagay nyo lang dito, magkakaroon ng campus director na full-time to be appointed by the board. Of the 30 campuses, how many campus directors have been appointed by the board? The, uh, honorable Chair, that is just designation. Why? That, so, no, no item for the camp, campus. So, so right. ang pinupunto ko nga, hindi purkit magiging system kayo, makaka-appoint na kayo. We can again change the charter Again, sir, I want to understand. System is not a magic word. It's not like a wand of a genie. Now, all of a sudden, all of your problems will be solved because that can be solved too by amending the law. I again ask the question. Hindi porkit walang system sa Cebu, hindi porkit walang system sa Visayas. What qualifies a university to be called a system. How many campuses is it supposed to have? Guide your committee as to how to decide on these matters. So, kung sino lang mag-apply. Hindi ko... 
maintindihan at pag hindi ko naintindihan, hindi ko masasagot ang tanong at hindi mapapasayan. So, help me out on this. I cannot simply say wala kasing system sa Cebu. May sistema naman siguro, wala lang university system. Di ba? I mean, does CHED have a different treatment for a university and a university system? Commissioner Libre, iba ba treatment ng CHED sa university system? Pag naging system pa kayo, iba na treatment sa inyo ng CHED, mas may autonomy kayo compared to university lang kayo without the word system? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as to the uh, um, autonomy, Mr. Chair, that will be very advantageous. Uh, no, no, as no, to no. the complement. Um, Once yeah. you become, a, you're called a system. Will said you give you more autonomy? You'll still, still be the chair of the board. You'll still be there. So, again, sir, anong, all of these amendments, ah, Inclusion of non-academic personnel. Sige, appointment of a chancellor, creation of an item, although you did not mention it here. You just said you will appoint a campus director, but you did not say anything about the creation of an item. I guess, pupunta muna kayo sa DBM para makreate yan, citing the law. But all of these things I can change by amending your charter. My question is, from the start, isa lang naman ang gusto ko malaman, ano ang problema to? Mas alam niyo yung kailangan niyo, kaya nga okay lang naman to eh. What's Why do you want to be called a system? What makes a university a system and not a system? Because Dr. Ancheta will be here because of CTU. Marami ibang lalapit sa amin na gusto maging system. Then, uh, where do we draw the line? As Ched, tell us, where do we draw the line? Pag more than 10 campuses ba, pwede na namin gawing system? Dapat ba 15, 20? But more than two, pwede na ba? What's the difference if we call it a system and we don't call it a system? I don't understand it. So that's, that's basically my question. Your answers have been on the fringes. Basically saying the proposed amendments to be made in your charter, which I can make without including the word system. Now, since you want to include the word system, make me understand. Why do you want to call... So there are now three systems, university systems. You will be the fourth. <coughs> I'll give you an example. Do you have a campus outside of Cebu? Do you have a campus outside of Cebu province? No, no, Honorable Chair. Only in Cebu. O de tatalunin North, kayo ng Bukidnon State University. Ang Bukidnon State University, may campus sa labas ng Bukidnon eh. Hindi ba mas may karapatan silang tawagin kong system dahil hindi na, wala na sa Bukidnon yung campus eh. No, I'm giving an example ha. I was trying to look for a reason sana. Di ba, Spaki, Bukidnon State University has a campus outside of Bukidnon? Yes, it means I miss, Mr. Chair. Hmm. Biri mo, may campus ang Bukidnon State University sa Misamis? Yo, baka pwede kong gawing system yun kasi ibang probinsya na eh. So again, Chad, please guide me. Okay, I, I presume, Dr. Enchet, uh, you want it. And I'll give you the amendments, no problem. I just want to be able to understand why are we including the word system and amending the name of the university into a system. All the amendments are madalion. Just the word system, why? What's the difference? What will you get out of it? What will qualify a university to be called a system? So that part of the committee can turn down anyone who would want to be called a system as well. Help us out. Please. Mr. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Libra, sir. Yes, uh, before our executive director, Attorney Haru, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd just like to emphasize, Mr. Chair, as to the advantages of the university system. Um, this will greatly improve the efficiency in the operations of the university this will also improve the level of uh, the, the level of resources this will also improve the transparency of the uh, 
the of the, the operations of the the system and as to the accountability mr chair setting aside of the one i mentioned that there will be a additional representatives in the governing board representing the non teaching which none mr chair in uh, the charter <clears throat> of the university and also uh emphasize as well as to really help the uh, regional development uh, uh, of, uh, of the, the whole province of Cebu. Maybe perhaps, Mr. Chair, we have Attorney Haro. <laughs> Attorney Haro, can you answer my question? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, Please. Mr. Chair, uh, when it comes to the university system, we have seen at one number eight uh, series of 2023. So anyone in terms of being able to all public and private institutions. Ma'am, budul budul ka. I apologize, Mr. Chair, kasi nas, I, I am in quarantine po kasi dahil may COVID. I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'll just stop my video baka po, mas okay po ang ating video. I'm sorry? Uh, yan, tagalan mo na yung video mo. Apo, uh, yan. Uh, to continue, Mr. Chair, actually, we have CFO number 8, series of 2023. For any uh, colleges or university which would like to apply for a university system, so a title for a uh, grant of university system kind of higher education institution. So we already have a policy when it comes to this. It's not only the policy, Mr. Chair. So what is the difference of a university to a university system? It's more of a governance perspective, Mr. Chair. Uh, dahil po doon sa governance perspective na uh, may mga constituent units ka. Uh, but I would like to emphasize lang po, Mr. Chair, that under our rules, in order to apply for a university system, all the constituent units must have somehow a parang yung compliance po sa university status, Mr. Chair. So, dapat po may, uh, at the very least, Mr. Chair, yung constituent units mo, my 14 undergraduates, my three masters at my two doctorate programs, Mr. Chair. All of it, all of the constituent units for Mr. Chair has to undergo that aside from the other qualifications for a university status, Mr. Chair. Attorney Haro, what was the MC you were mentioning kanina? Putul -putul ka. uh, CMO number eight, series of 2003, Mr. Chair. What does it say in that CMO? Uh, this is the grant of uh, university system title to higher education institutions. And it basically says? Uh, so, nakalagay po dito yung definition namin, the concept of a university system. Uh, we also have the guidelines for the establishment of a university system. Uh, and as I mentioned, what, yung, the important provision po doon is that all the constituent units should comply with the requirements for a university po. Pag hindi nag-comply? Hindi po dapat. Hindi, hindi po magagrantan ng university system. Hindi ninyo magagrantan? Yes, e, Mr. Chair. E ginagawa na namin system sa batas eh. Okay. Sa so, paano yun? In our CMO, po, Mr. Chair, we have laid down the uh, the, the mechanisms now on how CHED can give that university system title. Po. So what are the additional benefits of being called a system? Uh, uh, more of a governance perspective, po, Mr. Chair. Meaning? Because uh, the definition of the university system is that it is a clear, uh, there, is a, there should be a clearly defined organization Privately by the board and set of officers. So basically, po, yung constituent units po, I, uh, we see that as uh, having some sort of uh, autonomy with respect to other decision making. Academic side, po, Mr. Chair. Uh, the board of uh, the SUC concern. Kindly furnish us with a copy of the CMO. Yes, Mr. Um, Chair. Tama ba yung sinabi kanina? There are so far three university systems in the country, UP, MSU, and USTP? Uh, yung USTP po, Mr. Chair, kinukonfirm po. Sa, um, sa amin po ay UP, tama po, and uh, USTP. Ay, ay, I'm sorry, MSU. 
and URS pa lang sa share. So, yun po yung nasa record po namin. University of Rizal. So, right now, were they converted into a system by mere CHED fiat without a law? Uh, ang UP po at MSU, uh, we call that as a, a system based on the law. What about uh, your... Same with URS. Apo, same with URS. Law then? Apo, yes, sir. So, parang university ba to? Conversion ng college into university, meaning to say, we authorize its conversion, but it will only be official upon compliance with all the requirements of CHED. Yes, sir. Dapat po. Ganun ba yan? Yes, sir. Dapat kasi, yes, sir. Tama po. Is it in this proposed bill approved by the House? Nandun ba yan? Can we check? Mukhang wala. Spaki, nag-attend ka ba doon? Hindi ka nag-attend, ha? Hindi mo binantayan to, ha? Um, Mr. Chair, this was one of those bills that was uh, it's not approved here. not appropriate by the uh, Committee on Higher and Technical Education as this was approved in the previous Congresses, <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair. So, porkit in-approve sa nagdahang Kongreso, in na automatically. Wala ka pa noon, kaya yung predecessor mo may kasalanan. No, we submit to the wisdom of the uh, House, Mr. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> Chair hereby refers this to a technical working group and approves it in principle. In the technical working group, kindly compare the contents of, um, what's the number? CMO number? CMO number uh, 8, series of 2023. Uh, 2003, Mr. Chair. CMO number 8, series of 2023. 2003. 2003, Mr. Chair. 2003. Include a provision subject to the wording to be submitted by said compliance with said requirements before... CTU will be a um, system. Take into account and include already without vi if we will not be violating the one subject matter to be contained in the title thereof, House Bill number 7235, insofar as recognizing or converting the Dumanhog Extension Campus into a regular campus of the Cebu Technological University. Can we do that, Attorney Sbaki? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. That means to say we have to amend these two to include the names of all the other campuses subject to... Com it's not here. Eh? Subject to compliance with said requirements on the establishment of a regular campus. Constituent units, yes. Mr. Chair. The constituent units. So, tatawagin ng constituent unit yung regular campus. Hmm? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, it would depend on the nomenclature that would be submitted. And then we have to be uniform with respect yeah. to it. That's regular um, campus po. Um, para hindi na hiwalay na approval pa. So if at all that is possible, after consulting with legis and the Secretariat, consolidate House Bill number 6914 and House Bill number 7235. Thereafter... Upon review by the final review by the chair, the same can be already routed given that this is already approved in principle, subject to the conditionalities and guidelines as stated on the record by the chair. So ordered. Hoy, bigyan niyo talaga ako ng bala. May magtatanong talaga sa akin yan. Nasabihin ko na sa'yo kung sino magtatanong yan, si Pia. Anong system? Kindly furnish us with a copy of CMO number 82, series of 2003. Okay. Last three. Um, Anak Converting, PUP, located in the city of Paranaque as a regular campus. Any objections from Chad? PUP is not a system. As far as I, we know, as far as I know, it's not. Not, not your honor. So, any objections from Chad? Uh, our Chad Raw NCR director is here Please, sir. to comment on the uh, measure. What's his name, director? Uh, 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 director Jet Paras, uh, Mr. Chair. Director Paras, you are recognized, sir, for your comments on House Bill number 1791 and Senate Bill number 2025. Thank you, Commissioner Libre. Thank you, sir. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Para chair. Mr. Chair, maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Libre. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, thank you, sir. 
Yes, yeah. Director Paras. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, we support the passing of the bill on the conversion of PUP Paranaque into a regular campus. Right now, Mr. Chair, uh, PUP Paranaque is just considered an extension campus, meaning uh, it has no autonomy. Okay. All the uh, uh, administrative and uh, government functions of the governance functions of the campus are still lodged at the PUP main campus, Mr. Chair. Uh, however, Mr. Chair, our only uh, manifestation is that uh, the program compliance of the uh, PUP Paranaque campus have has to be met by the campus, Mr. Chair. It's the same provision as discussed earlier. Chair. Ma'am, same provision as discussed earlier. We can approve via a law that it will be a regular campus subject to compliance with said requirements. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. No um, objection, Mr. Chair. One, one provision that we would want included would be a provision that sub, uh, unless and until the, the Paranaque campus once this uh, once this is approved until uh, until such time that they all the programs currently being offered uh have not yet obtained their uh, certificate of program compliance the paranyaki campus should not be allowed to Set requirements open then. other programs Wala na yun, labas na yun, kayo na yun. because it would affect the it could affect the quality of the programs being offered no, but the programs they will be offering have uh, other matters. But whatever program they will offer has to be approved by CHED anyway. They cannot just offer a course without your approval. Diba? So why do I have to include that in the law that makes it turns it into a regular campus? In fact, they have to comply with respect to their existing programs with CHED requirements. And any new course they want to offer, or program they want to offer, you have to approve it anyway. Diba? Aprobahan nyo naman yun eh. Hindi ko sila pwedeng pagbawal unless, because that's not found in the other um, conversions into a regular campus. Kaya nyo na yun, Spaki. Ang ilalagay ko dito is a provision that basically says they will not be considered a regular campus, the law notwithstanding, unless they comply with all said requirements on the establishment of a regular campus of PUP or of any other university. And that there is no timetable for them to comply. Kasi pag nilagay ko in three years, in five years, babalik na naman kayo rito, magpapaminda na naman kayo sa amin, iwana. You will not be, Paranaque will not be a regular campus until they comply. Unless they comply. Okay? Mr. Chair. Okay, Director Paras, you're okay with that? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, House Bill number 1791 is hereby consolidated with Senate Bill number 2025 and the same is hereby approved subject to the amendment that it will not take effect and subject to style. It will not take effect. Spaki kayo na gumawa ng wording para mas maganda, para comfortable kayo. It will not be effective until and unless um, the Paranaque um, City Campus has complied with all the requirements established and required by CHED for the establishment of a regular campus without any timetable. So ordered. Finally, um, finally, um, conversion of uh, Mountain Province State Polytechnic into university. Um, what's CHED's position on this? Again, uh, like other conversions, we can pass this law, but they will not be considered a university unless they comply with all of CHED's requirements without actually, the timetable. Actually, Mr. Chair, this is not a uh, full charter. This is actually an amendment of a charter which was previously approved to change Section 9 of that particular Ay, law. Ba to? Only one section is uh, sought to be amended, and that is to change the word interim to new president. It's more of making sure that the incumbent mm. president becomes the new president, rather than being simply the interim president, uh, Mr. Chair. Para mo ng awang, Arto nila. Gusto ba nila talagang ganun? Mr. Chair? Mr. 
Why is this necessary? Yes, ma'am. Um, Commissioner uh, Kanabi. Uh, good morning uh, to uh, everyone, especially to our honorable as Senator Jesus Codero. Yes, ma'am. I am the chairman of the Board of Trustees of, of uh, Multi Province State Polytechnic College. Yes, ma'am. Why is this necessary? The, uh, the bill, uh, the Senate Bill Number Two O O Nine, seeks to amend on this Section uh, Nine of the previous bill that has converted um, uh, MPSPC into a university. On May 24, 2013, Republic Act Number no. Ten Five Eight Three converted already the Mountain Province State Polytechnic College into a state university. However, they have to comply with the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education in order for them to be declared a university. At present, the, uh, the college has already complied substantially in most of the requirements of the uh, university status for the conversion of the university status. However, uh, we have elected the president only last September of 2022, meaning he has only served for around uh, six months and has only started the strategic plan that he wants to happen uh, in the institution. However, uh, in the near future, or in a few weeks, uh, Mr. Chair, they might be converted into a university because they have complied substantially to all of the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education and needs only to be as uh, to be a part of the CEB uh, resolution converting them into a university. But then uh, Section 9 of the previous uh, Republic Act 10583 states that within three months from the approval of the establishment of the university, which will be known as the Mountain Province State Polytechnic University, the board shall constitute the search committee for the president again. And so uh, the Senate Bill number 2009 uh, seeks to amend this particular provision to become as follows, that the uh, incumbent president of the college, if qualified, will be the first president of the university. Mr. Chair, that is the essence of Senate Bill number So two, uh, the first president will serve for a term of four years. House Bill number 6855 by Congressman Maximo Y. Dallor. Ma'am, so the term of the president will be for four years, which shall start beginning late last year. Yes, of course. September 4, 2022. Hanggang 2026 pa But then, uh, it will be converted in, um, in just a few weeks na po. Uh, siguro po by July or August, baka po makonvert na siya. In which case, the Board of Trustees uh, uh, would like to have a smooth transition from the college to a university by retaining the, the present president. Because if we will be electing a new president, then the, the transition from the college to a university might have some problems because we will be uh, assigning the interim president or an officer in charge. Ma'am, sa ngayon, Interim president siya dahil aprobado na yung batas converting you to a university pero hindi pa nagka-qualify by CHED guidelines na university siya, right? Uh, yes, sir. Pero president po talaga siya as of this time. Hindi po interim. Hindi po siya interim. May term no, siya na four years. Under, yes. under the law, ma'am, under the law, interim pa rin siya. Hindi pa naman na-amend eh. So he is, uh, right now, the interim president. Right? President po siya ng MPSPC na yon. Magiging interim president po siya pag na-convert na po into a university. So ibig sabihin po, sir, pag na-convert siya, yung pong kanyang pagka-president, uh, which is supposed to be after 2026, will be converted into an interim president of the university for three months. So ano so, siya ngayon? President uh, ng college. President, uh, a college president po. President uh, ng Mountain uh, Province State Polytechnic College. Yes, sir. Opo. Now, ma'am, if so, we president. amend the law. If we amend um, the law, he will become the first president. Hindi na po interim. He will become the first president 
of the, um, uh, the uh, Mountain Progress State Polytechnic University commencing po on the date that the CEB will convert this into a university. So, ma'am, no, mag-chronological tayo, ma'am, para lang klaro. Assuming sa July o kung anong buwan man, maging university na siya, certified to by CHED. Oh, yes. So, na-elect siya last September? Yes, of course. The college president? Apo. Um, pagdating ng July, pag naging university na siya, sinong magiging presidente ng Mountain Province State Polytechnic University? Uh, Carry over ba siya? As magiging interim president pa lang po siya for three months kasi the, the Board of Regents will call for a search for president of the first university po. Ma'am, magkakol po kami ulit ng search for presidency pero he, he may be allowed to become the interim president for three months habang nagsisearch po kami for president. This is in July? Yes, yes opo. So, If so, yung term niya, hindi four years. Uh, October, hindi. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Ten months plus three months, 13 months. No po, sir, yes. It will end um, after three months po na maging university na po yung MPSPU. Can he run again? Sir, uh, come again po. Can he run again? I, I, yes, uh, sir, uh, pwede po siyang mag but hindi po siya ngayon pwede maging interim president kapag mag siya. Kasi po under our existing rules, hindi po pwede yung officer in charge or interim president yung mag as uh, president of the university. Kung so, kung gusto siya, niyang tumakbo, magre-resign siya pag naging university, sino yes. ngayon ang magiging presid interim president? Um, we, be, we will be assigned in the Board of Regents, we'll be electing uh, an officer in charge for the university while the search for presidency is going on. And usually, uh, we uh, uh, elect the regional director of the uh, region to be the uh, officer in charge or interim president while the search is going on. Is that in a memorandum circular of CHED or is that practice? Yes, Uh, that is in a memorandum circular, previously CMO number 16, now CMO number 7. Na yung regional director ang magiging acting president? Hindi. No, hindi naman po necessary the regional director, but the one that will be uh, 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 elected or selected by the Board of Regents. Pwede pong, pwede pong hindi ang regional director. Pwede rin pong somebody from inside may be selected by the Board of Regents. As, uh, let's say uh, the highest ranking professor may be selected as the uh, interim president or OIC in the event that the president will run. Ma'am, kindly coordinate or have your staff coordinate with my staff. Yes, I'll sir. approve this, ma'am, but you're talking of two separate things, eh? Addressing a problem in the transition to a university And later on, once it's a university, siyempre, fix na yung rules natin. Di ba? Yes, fix sir. na yung rules mo na um, term of office, yes, chuchu yes, um, yes, So, can you coordinate of, uh, with our legis? Baka gusto nyo sa transitory provisions natin ilagay itong kinakaharap nyong sitwasyon in the transition. Yes, And then, yung provision talaga on the pre university president in Section 9 will apply once you're a university already. Para hindi nakakalito, mag-transitory uh, yes, provision tayo. Uh, para yes, doon yes, na rin ilagay kung gusto nyo na yung incumbent president cannot run. He can only run if he resigns para sa transitory provisions. Hindi sa part ng main charter ng university. Uh, Let's put it in the transitory provision sa dulo before the repealing and a mandatory clause. Uh, Para klaro na in the transition lang sa hindi siya mag apply for future presidents. Uh, uh, yes, sir. We can actually include it in the transitory provisions, but the Board of Regents want it to be forwarded as to have the incumbent president of the college, if qualified, as the first president of the university. 
Ma'am, but there are several requirements. Eh? If he will win, number two, if he will resign, because as he said, he cannot run if he's an incumbent. How can the incumbent uh, be the, be qualified to run? Uh, sir, actually, the, the Board of Trustees um, would like the, the, the president, the, the current president, to become the the incumbent president to become the first university president. And if we want Sana not to have the search for presidency anymore because uh, she has just been elected uh, six months ago and has uh, only been starting to uh, strategically place the institution to the vision that he wants to have. And the transition to the university is one of the part of his vision. So by amending for the section nine, into having the incumbent president of the college, if qualified as the first president of the university, there will be no need for us to open the search. And have ma him... Ma'am, yun nga ang problema ko eh. Inaamiendahan nyo. I saw that at the onset pa, ma'am, actually. Ginagawa din naman ng ibang, ibang lugaran eh. You're amending section 9, a main section of the bill, of the law, converting it into university when what you want to address is in the transition para wag na mag-election yung nakaupong presidente. Ba't ko ilalagay sa main provision? I mean, you have to... It will be interpreted differently. I mean, yung klaro, ihiwalay natin yung politika ngayon. Di ba yung intention ngayon? Dun sa in the future pag university na... That's why I'm suggesting ilagay ito sa transitory provision. Let's not amend section 9. If you want, we can remove the word interim. Ah, pwede pa yung first paragraph, pero yung second paragraph, hindi na eh, nasa transitory na yan eh. I mean, it's okay if that's the intention of the board. I have no problems with it. Um, if that is, uh, is it officially endorsed by the board of trustees? Itong amendment? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair, we we are uh, we have endorsed it and strongly endorsed the Senate bill. Uh, Did you write a resolution to that? Is there a resolution to that effect by the trustees? Yes, sir. We have a resolution for, uh, signed by the majority of the members, 8 out of 11 members. Po. Did it state the reason behind the amendment that you want the incumbent? To be the first yes, president sans a search committee in an election to be the first president of the university. Yes, sir. It is placed point the uh, uh, resolution that we have passed. Okay. I know, problem, ma'am. So, um, kindly coordinate. We'll coordinate with you. It's okay, ma'am. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, as long as there's transparency and accountability with respect to what you want, and I have no objections yes, to it. Yeah. Kindly coordinate with um, Commissioner um, Kanapi as to the wording and with the legal of uh, CHED as to the wording at kung saan mas magandang ilagay, kung saan transitory provisions o sa so Section 9 as they're proposing. But in principle, Chair hereby approves Senate Bill Number 2009 subject to the commentaries made earlier by Commissioner Kanapi and the direction given by the chair. So ordered. Thank you very much. Uh, Four manifestations uh, lang itong mga bills po. 25 to 29. Um, for some administrative matters, before we um, suspend, um, Senate Bill number 2072, 2079, 2090, 2120, is hereby consolidated and taken into account with House Bill Number 6128. Chair hereby issues a new order administratively. Senate Bill Number 1935 is hereby consolidated with a similar bill, House Bill Number 6128, which is being routed. Senate Bill Number 2072 is hereby consolidated and should be taken into account with the similar Senate Bill, Senate Bill Number 364, which has been referred to the subcommittee by Senator Joel. So the same should be referred as well to the subcommittee of Senator Joel. Senate Bill Number 2079 uh, is hereby consolidated and should be taken into account with House Bill Number 
5001 and Senate Bill Numbers 1407, 1672, 1679, and 1708, um, where there is already um, a committee report being drafted. Senate Bill Number 2090 is hereby consolidated and taken into account with House Bill Number 6473 and Senate Bill Number 1628, which was heard last February 21, 2023. And finally, Senate Bill Number 2120. Um, is hereby consolidated and taken into account together with Senate Bill Number 1614, which was already heard by the committee last February 21, 2023. Any other matters? No. Chair would like to thank um, all of our invited guests who attended both personally and virtually. Thank you for your time. Um, hanggang sa muling pagkikita and kindly coordinate with the Secretariat and TWG with respect to what we discussed so that we can facilitate the approval and submission to plenary of the bills that was approved that were approved by the Chair. In the meantime, walang lunch na isisilbi. Um, magandang umaga po. Maraming salamat. Chair hereby suspends um, the hearing of the Committee on Higher and Technical Education and Vocational Education. Magandang umaga. Thank you.